All right, welcome back to another episode of the Thy Pythonic Accountant. Today, we're going to get into one of my favorite topics that we have not discussed yet, which is AI and machine learning for accounting. This is an area that I've been thinking a lot about and I think is ripe for really bringing into the field of accounting. Um, I'm sure there's a lot already happening there, especially when you look at the finance side of things, but from financial accounting and reporting and auditing, I think it's still kind of new and there's a lot yet to be explored. So today we're going to look at two libraries that can help us with this. One is called Profit, and that's a Facebook library that is intended for doing uh, time series predictions. So there's a few different types of machine learning and uh, AI. Now, the first one we're going to focus on is time series. It's kind of a little more straightforward to uh, use and to understand. Um, some of the other ones will be really interesting we'll look at later, maybe like natural language processing. So we'll see. So for the Profit, this one is pretty straightforward to download. You just have to pip install Profit. Um, the instructions are here. And then once you've got it installed, it's really easy to uh, import. And then the other library we're going to use is an easy way to get just some fundamental financial data using Simfin. And I'm just using the free data that's available from them. So I just used the Simfin information from GitHub and the free API key, which is just the word free. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to pull in some information from the income statements and from the balance sheets from uh, historical quarters for uh, the company Apple and see what kind of predictive uh, models we can come up with. So first we're installing Profit and Simfin. I've already done this, so I'm not going to take the time again. Um, we run our imports here. We're going to need date time, pandas. We're doing a little visualization using Altair. Um, then we need the Profit library in Simfin. Um, next, this is something with Simfin. I guess you have to set the dictionary location where uh, your data dictionary is going. Um, and then we have to name that our API is the free API. Um, so now we're going to actually download some data. So I'm creating this DF1. This data frame is uh, going to be the Simfin loading income data. We want quarterly data for the US. And that just takes. Uh, yeah, well, it, it's already downloaded on my computer, but it takes uh, just a minute for that to download. What we're going to do is we're going to set Apple as the data frame. And so we're uh, making our ticker uh, just the Apple ticker. So if you view the head, this is the head of the data frame here. You've got kind of the first five records that are for the Apple data. And you can see there's a lot of information here. Um, around the, the different aspects of the income statement. So we could pick whichever one we want on revenue just because why not? So what I'm doing here is I'm setting um, the revenue text to or a string to the values variable. That way if we want to change which column we're grabbing, we can change that very easily. And we're setting this data frame uh, to equal just the columns of uh, report date and the revenue. And what that's going to look like is just those two columns will show up. And the reason why we're doing that is because for the profit uh, library, we really need just two columns. We just need a date and we need a number. And so then it's going to use the combination of the dates and numbers to look at the historical values and then make a prediction of future values. So now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to convert that report date to an actual date time format. It's going to be a lot easier for uh, Py us to use it in Python. And then this is the chart uh, using Altair of the uh, revenues by quarter from 2000 all the way through 2020. And so you can see it starts to have some kind of a trend and then it gets pretty seasonal once you get to the you know recent few years. So let's go ahead and create that profit, <laughs> create that predictive uh, set of values. So what we're doing here is we're creating this variable m that is just an instance of the profit class. And we're fitting the data into this model. And we're saying that the right here, I'm just converting the column names to be the columns that it's expecting. So it needs one column called ds, which is the dates, and then one column for the values, which is y. And it is fitting it. And because we don't have daily or weekly data, it's automatically disabling the seasonality associated with weeks and days. So if at some point we, in a future video, look at daily or weekly data, 
um, then we can get some weekly and daily seasonality there. So save that for a future one. And then what we'll do here is we're looking at the last five records just to see what are the last dates that we're grabbing. Oh, um, <laughs> I forgot. I should show you what, tell you what we're looking at here. So we're creating this future set of dates. So we're saying, okay, we want to make future data frame of dates. Um, we want 12 new periods. So since we're quarterly, that's going to be three years since there's four quarters in a year. And we're saying the frequency is Q for quarterly. And then the last five are showing that, okay, we're going through March 31st, 2023. Um, and now what this is going to do is uh, we're creating a forecast. So we do m.predict future. It's going to predict the future values. And we're looking at uh, just the values uh, for some of the columns here. So y hat, y hat lower, and y hat upper. Um, you know, I'm, I'm still learning what this library uh, means, and I'm new to the machine learning. So this is kind of I'm learning as I go, as some of you may be learning as you go as well. But I think these are some of those predictive values. I think the y hat is sort of the, the probably predicted value itself. And then there's a lower and upper range. Now, these numbers are hard to view because it's uh, exponential to uh, the power of 10. But basically, I think that means that you can take you know, this number and add 10 zeros after it. So this would be like 80 million, 70 million, 90 million. And so you'll see that um, later on. And actually, if you go back here, you can see that's about right for some of those years where you've got you know, 90 million is the upper range, 60 million is the lower range. And you know, that's about kind of consistent with what, we see, what we're seeing here. Um, and so now you can already see the uh, chart here. I think this is really cool. So this is something that um, the dots will show you the true values up until the last value that is uh, an actual. And then the shaded is kind of the upper and lower range. And then that blue line is the predicted value. And so you can see it does account for some seasonality that it's picking up in the more recent values. And, you know, a lot of the dots are outside of the range, but they're still close to the upper or lower bounds of that range. So it does give you kind of some predictive uh, aspects here. And so, you know, you might be asking, well, what am I going to use this for? You know, this isn't like the stock prices or anything. And we're not really thinking about this from an investor's standpoint. You know, I'm kind of thinking about this from almost like an internal control standpoint. Like if I have, uh, you know, a, a value that I would expect the revenues to be, at a certain quarter, I could plot it and I could put it onto these predictive values and say, is this you know pretty close to the value I would expect it to be based on this model? And if it's outside of maybe a certain percentage of what the predicted value is, then you could look into it and say, is there something wrong? You know, did we get something wrong in our calculations? Are we missing input? Um, are we looking at the wrong quarter? Is there, you know, potential fraud or misstatement here? So it's kind of a, a nice way to add a level of internal controls and monitoring uh, using AI and machine learning uh, more than just your kind of typical ratio analysis. These are a couple additional plots you get. This shows you a little bit of the seasonality. Not exactly sure how to interpret this yet. Um, and this is just kind of the very high level, I think, uh, you know, line of, uh, you know, actual values through the predict predicted values at the end. Um, one thing we're going to do as well here is same concept as we did with the income statement, but downloading the balance sheet. So I've already downloaded the balance sheet here and filtered it for just Apple. And again, we're looking at uh, a specific line here. We're going to do cash, cash equivalents and short-term investments. And so we've mapped that out here to show, okay, Let's see, and actually let me show you the data frame real quick to see what uh, this looks like. So this is the DF balance app. And you can see the data frame. It's similar, it's a little bit different. For some reason, the uh, library uh, has the index as a report date. Previously in the income statement, the report date is a separate column. So you have to treat that a little bit differently in the data frame. Um, but basically, you have access to a whole bunch of different aspects of the balance sheet, which is really cool. And so, you know, here we're looking at the cash and cash equivalents because I thought that was an interesting one to look at. And so, we create this uh, balance sheet of the data frame. We are now, you know, creating a report date column that uses the date time version of the report. Um, this is the cash balance for Apple over the years by quarter. And so you can see there should be some kind of trend. There's like a dip there. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what it does. 
and we do the same set of periods, so three years, to predict out and see what it looks like. Again, you've got the, the y hat, y hat lower and upper, um, and here you go. This is pretty cool. So you can see that it creates this trend line um, with the upper and lower bounds that you know pretty closely follows along with what actual uh, happens. And you can see this uptick um, starting in 2015. It just kind of kicks in high gear and is pretty consistent. So I mean, this this almost to me looks like a pretty basic regression line. But it's able to pick it up really easily just by, you know, the couple of lines that we throw at it. And so, again, you could use this for internal controls or even predicting kind of what's your cash balance going to look like. Um, so, you know, could be pretty useful depending on what you need it for. And you can see a little bit of the upper and lower bounds there in uh, this uh, chart here. I think if we added some more periods, let's let's say we wanted to, per, you know, set this out to 120. That's going to be insane. But we'll see what this looks like all the way through 2050. My guess is it'll just continue that straight line after it kicks it up into high gear. And yeah, sure enough, you see it going up and to the right. It's it's getting some seasonality that it's trying to do. But what I want to see is if you get a broader range of upper and lower bounds on this line here. And sure enough, you do. So you get a, a lot higher and lower uh, set of you know where it predicts it could be once you get to those really far out years. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed checking out these two libraries that we are hopefully going to dive into a lot more. It's the uh, Profit and the Simfin. And again, if you want to check it out, there's the you know Facebook.github.io. They've got Profit, a ton of great documentation. Seems like a really powerful library. And then uh, Simfin looks really interesting. Um, again, I'm using the free API. They have a paid version, which I have not used and don't plan to this is more just you know kind of for fun for experimental but um, they do have uh, a broader maybe more detailed data maybe it goes to more current i'm not sure what the the paid version gets but for our purposes this is good enough for me um, if you enjoyed the video and want to see more like it please click subscribe um, and please click like if you like the video mm -hmm. and uh, leave a comment if you have any suggestions on where you might want to see us take the uh, profit AI and machine learning next. Have a good one.